The waves are pushing you towards a coral island. There's just a bit further to row, through the reef. Then you will have reached the safety of the lagoon. You've pulled the boat into the gentle lagoon waters. You can see the beach ahead, about 400 yards of sand between rocky headlands to the left and right. There are palm trees all along the back of the beach. You can see the forest running up into the hills behind. Even though the sun is low in the sky, the air is hot and still. At last, You've landed the boat onto the beach. You're exhausted after rowing. You lie down on your back to rest in the golden sand. Waves break gently around your arms and legs. You sit up and look around. There are pieces of driftwood, exotic seaweeds, coconut shells that have floated in on the tide. The sun is red, nearly setting over the sea. You need to get some wood for a fire. You walk up towards the forest edge. The sand is still hot on your feet. You reach the trees and look inside. You can only see about 20 feet in. The undergrowth is thick and tangled. You collect pieces of wood from the forest floor, as well as fallen leaves and coconut husks. Out on the sand, you build a small fire, just about a foot high. You just managed to save some matches from the shipwreck. You light the fire with them, and it burns with small licks of flame.
At last it's dark. With the glow from the fire illuminating a small patch of sand around you. At least you're safe here. Whatever happens in the forest tomorrow. You lay down on the sand. Looking up, there are thousands of stars. Listening to the surf, tired from your day's efforts, you drift into sleep. It's morning, and you've walked into the forest. It feels closed in and dark. The trees are thin and tall. Beams of light come from 50 feet above. There are parrots just visible in the branches. Reds, blues, all different colours. Ahead, you can't see very far before leaves and vines block the view. You walk on, the ground sloping gently uphill. You've come a lot further into the forest. It's difficult to know which direction you're walking in. All around, as it becomes hotter and more humid, you can smell the perfumed aromas of flowers. Some huge ones drooping down from the trees. Sweat is glistening from your arms. There is no sign of movement anywhere, apart from small animals, occasionally scuttling away from you into the undergrowth.
Perhaps this island is uninhabited. Suddenly, you see something strange looking out from the branches. A pole about six feet high, with a face mask staring at you. There are three shrunken heads hanging beneath it. Maybe you're not the only person on this island after all. Whoever they are, they're not very friendly. You emerge from the trees into a clearing, about a hundred feet across. Bare earth, mostly. There's a raised area in the middle, with a fire still smoking on it. To the right, there are more poles in the ground, all with masks on them. Horrible faces with sharp teeth and staring eyes. Drums in the distance. It must be the people who made this clearing. Maybe they already know you're on the island. You hurry across to the far side of the clearing. There are some spears stuck in the ground. A pile of objects. Old boxes. A shovel. Old food jars. And there in the earth. A piece of parchment paper. It's a map. It shows a path from the back of the clearing to the far end of the island. There's a mark, as if something is buried there. Treasure, perhaps. You see the narrow path between the trees and enter the forest once more. You're going away from the drums at last, walking downhill again. The trees seem to be getting thinner here. More sunshine filters down, making the air even hotter. Here and there, you meet large rocks that you have to climb over. Ahead, the map shows a river, with a bridge where the path crosses. You see it ahead, a break in the trees, the river, about 30 feet wide, with an old rope bridge crossing it. It hangs about 10 feet over the water. Old, with vines creeping around the ropes and planks. You carefully step out, making for the middle. It swings from side to side.
the path is visible going into the forest again. Clutching the map, you set off into the gloom. After a while, the trees are thick and close to the path. Above, gibbons call from high branches, lazily jumping from tree to tree. It's afternoon. The hottest part of the day. The humidity is almost stifling. Suddenly, it seems to become darker. The sun is obscured overhead. Clouds are building up. This must be the tropical downpour that happens every day. You shelter, squatting with your back against a tree trunk. Water falls down through the upper branches. Some stopped by the massive palm fronds above you. Everything is soaking. The ground is awash, with earth, leaves, and bits of undergrowth swirling around your feet. There's no point in going on. You wait here until the rain passes. The rain is very heavy now. Steam is rising from the undergrowth to the treetops.
The rain has stopped at last. You find the path again. The forest is different here. The trees are so thick that the branches need to be continually brushed aside. The creepers around the trunks extend long vines everywhere, trapping your feet. You have to step over fallen tree trunks. But at last, there seems to be some light in the trees ahead. It's sunlight. It's the edge of the forest some 20 feet away. You can just make out the sounds of the sea again. You push past the last few trees and emerge onto the beach. The bright sunlight hurts your eyes at first. Then you see the white sand with driftwood here and there. Looking to the left, at the end of the beach, is a great clump of rocks. To the right, about half a mile, a massive headland comes right down to the sea. Looking at the map, the burial spot is shown. You turn to the left, and walk along the forest edge. You can see, just in the shadow of the trees, a small dune with a rough wooden cross upright in the sand. There's a horrible face scratched onto the wood. There must be something buried here. You dig down in the sand. You've struck something. It's a wooden chest, about two feet square. It's tremendously heavy. You drag it out onto the level sand. It's got an old rusted padlock keeping it closed. You take the wooden plank and smash it open. You drop to your knees. With trembling fingers, you open the lid. There are gold coins, hundreds of them. Jewels, necklaces, rings, bracelets that you run through your fingers. smile to yourself. 
you're now the richest person for thousands of miles around, with nothing to spend your money on. You sit down on the sand and look out to sea, hoping you'll see a ship on the horizon. Thank you.